Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hello, I am Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, we are going to continue learning about punctuation rules. This class will carry over from yesterday's class here at Verbling. Now, yesterday, we looked at more basic punctuation periods, exclamation points, question marks, commas. Uh, today, we're going to look at the more nuanced, more subtle, uh, probably less widely used punctuation, things like apostrophes, colons, semilons, and hyphens, uh, parentheses, things of that nature, to see how they are used in English. Uh, quite a bit of material to get to today, actually, a lot to learn. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to welcome Heidi. Hello, Heidi. Hello. Nice to see you again. Uh, nice to see you as well. Welcome. Uh, okay. Well, as I mentioned, we have a lot of material, so I'm just going to jump right in. Of course, I expect a lot of others to be joining the class, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, because it's uh, free. Yeah, it's fully booked, so maybe another class is running late, I don't know. But uh, in any case, I'm going to get started because I can never finish this lesson on time. There's a, so much material, so I'm going to oh. begin. Um, first, I'm going to start, uh, again, as I mentioned yesterday, we looked at the basics, periods, question marks, commas. Um, today, I'm going to begin with semicolons. Do you know what a semicolon is, for starters? Heidi? Yes, it's um, two marks line on the vertical. Point and... <coughs> Pardon uh, me. How do you say it? Colon? How can I say it? Virgola. Never mind. Okay. Well, a colon... Like it's baby frog. <laughs> baby like frog. Baby frog, like a polywog. Polywog. Yeah. yeah, more or less like a polywog. So what is a polywog used for? <laughs> um, uh, comma. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Like a, a dot and a comma. And a comma. Uh, end up in the bad color. <laughs> that's it. You've got it. That's exactly right. Um, all right. So... Uh, do you have any idea what a semicolon is used for? Um, semicolon, for example, <laughs> um, uh, to, uh, after semicolon, uh, to ex explain about uh, some something just before the semicolon. No. <laughs> Actually, you're thinking of a colon. All right, let's let's get started. Let me uh, welcome Eliza. Hi, Eliza. Hey. Hi, Hi teacher. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Likewise. Fine, thank you. Uh, okay, let, let's let me. I'm going to do a screen share. Let's talk about semicolon a little bit here. All right. Uh, okay, first and most probably common use of a semicolon is to join two independent clauses. In other words, to create a compound sentence. Um, now, of course. This would normally be when you would probably use comma and uh, because when you use other conjunctions or other connectives to form uh, to form compound sentences, often you know if you use so or yet or but, uh, you, you've got a cause and result thing going on, so you're probably going to need to use the conjunction to make it logical. But here's an example. Casey read a book, then he did a book report. Great. So you can see this is where you could, your alternative, of course. But in this case, we can use only, um, I forgot to this mark. Comma? <laughs> yes, it's comma. I was just so. going to do that. Yeah, you're exactly right. You could, your, your alternative, whoops, is that right? Yep. Your alternative is to a comma and then uh, a you know, connective, a conjunction like and, and then he did a book report. Either this or this are perfectly correct. Uh, 
Okay, so you can do either. It doesn't really matter. Often, often you will see the semicolon when you have a, like a really long sentence, or especially a sentence that includes two. Uh, I mean three independent clauses. So rather than using a comma and a conjunction and a comma and a conjunction, in one of those cases, you kind of break it up, the flow of writing, by using a semicolon. That's often the case. Uh, okay, uh, another use. Uh, we use a semicolon to separate items in a series because the series contains things with a comma. Uh, here's an example. Um, because we, one use of a comma is to separate a city and a state, for example, American states. Uh, so here you see, went on field trips to Topeka, Kansas, and then because you, using another comma would be confusing, frankly, just plain confusing. So instead we um, use a semicolon. All right, Topeka, Kansas, Freedom, Oklahoma, and Amarillo, Texas. Yeehaw! Okay, anyway, uh, so it's also used in that way. Not a whole lot of uses for a semicolon. Okay, uh, next is the colon. That's the one with two dots vertically. Uh, Eliza, do you know a use for a colon? <laughs> I just, you know, I just realized that when I said that, but I, that, that sounds ridiculous because a colon has another meaning in English, vocabulary-wise. It's also a part of your lower, lower intestinal tract, your, your digestive system. <laughs> So, I, sorry, sorry about that, Eliza. But I, I just realized when I say something stupid like, "What's another use for your no colon?" <laughs> yeah, I realized I'm saying something <laughs> ridiculous. All right. Anyway, colon punctuation. I mean, <laughs> do you know another use, Eliza? Uh, or a use? We haven't even. Can you think of a use for a colon? A column uh, as punctuation? Yeah, as punctuation. Yes. No? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, all yeah. right. Not really getting in any information. Let me. Okay, fine. Keiko, uh, let me welcome Keiko to the class. Hi, Keiko. Keiko, are your is your mic working? Couldn't hear you there. Hey, teacher. Hey, there we go. You got it. How are nice you? Nice to see you. Likewise. Uh, okay. Uh, Keiko, do you need, do you know any uses for a colon? Uh, punctuation. Colon. Yeah. I don't, uh, sorry teacher, I don't oh. remember what's colon. Ah, okay, all right, well let's only, take a look. Only semicolon. All right, all right, let's take a look. Let me quickly welcome Christian. Hi there, Christian. Hello, Christian, how are you? Okay, when you can, give me a shout out, say hello. Uh, uh, okay, well, all right, let's take a, take a look at uh, our first use. Uh, okay, uh, quite simple. Colons, like, instead of a semicolon with a dot and a comma underneath, it's just a dot and a dot vertical. All right, so that's a colon. That's what it looks like here. And we obviously use it to express a time, um, like this example. School starts at 8.05 a.m. All right, well, this is very common. Uh, okay, here's uh, another use. You use a colon to introduce a list that appears, now this is kind of important, after an independent clause. Um, it, it, often, to make this clear, we use uh, words like uh, following. Um, uh, we, we use some kind of words to express. Here comes a list. Uh, something something like this, all right? Uh, so here you go. You need the following items for class, and then there's your colon. 
pencil, pens, paper, blah, blah, blah. There's your list. All right, so this is acceptable. The one mistake that people often make is they don't actually make an independent clause first. Uh, okay, here's one you probably don't know and you may never need, but here it is. Uh, when you're mentioning a volume number and page number, such as volume and page number of a magazine or um, encyclopedia or newspapers have volume numbers and uh, like that. So uh, here you go. You find the information about Mexico in Grolier Encyclopedia 17 245. So 17 uh, here refers to the volume number because it's a series, a connected series, like magazines and newspapers also have volume numbers, encyclopedias. Um, okay, so first number is the volume number, and uh, 245 is the page number. So if you see that, that's what you're looking at. Uh, okay, let me quickly welcome Aaron. To Hello. The class. Hello, Aaron. Teacher. How are you? I'm fine. You? I'm doing okay. Uh, we're exploring punctuation rules. Well, right now, we're looking at uh, the uses of a colon. Um, now, yesterday, I have to confess, I made a slight mistake. Uh, we were looking at commas, and I expressed the idea that after uh, a greeting or a salutation, we call it, of the beginning of a letter, salutation, dear Martha, uh, you would you would necessarily put a comma. Actually, to tell you the truth, it's quite acceptable to use a comma or a colon, but a colon is for more formal or business letters. Uh, frankly, if you're writing, if I'm writing a business letter and I know Martha, uh, I would write "Dear Martha Smith, comma" to make it seem a little friendlier. I would probably tend to use a colon when I didn't know, like "Dear Sir," I don't know who I'm writing to. So it's not an anonymous letter. I'm going to sign it, but uh, I don't know who it's directed to specifically. So these cases, it's probably better to use a colon after your salutation. Uh, here's another one. All right, a lot of uses for a colon. <laughs> use a colon between the title and the subtitle of a book. Oh yeah, this is common. Okay, great. You even see this in movie titles occasionally. Uh, something like this, reading strategies that work, teaching your students to become better readers. Okay, great. Something of that nature, that's another place where you see a colon. I've always thought that was a slightly odd thing to do, but a title and subtitle, but hey, it happens, especially with self-help books and the like. And uh, if you... I was thinking this when we looked at uh, volume and page number. That reminded me as well uh, in the Bible. If you're citing chapter and verse in the Bible, uh, you would also use a colon. It would look something like this. Please read Genesis 1. And actually when we speak it, how would we speak this? Uh, Heidi, do you know how, you, how to speak this sentence? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, you. You actually need to use words. Point, I don't know right. Okay. Okay. Please. All right. It's like this. Please read Genesis chapter one, verse three. So you actually have to use the words when you when you're speaking this out loud. You don't just say please read Genesis one three. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, on to apostrophe. All right. How about this one, Eliza? Do you know uh, a circumstance where you would use an apostrophe? Eliza, are you, are you there? 
Oh yes. Uh, when I when I say something something that uh, the other other people said. Uh, Example. Uh, Oakley said. Okay. As apostrophe. Uh, uh, the the phrase. Right. Right. A quote. In other words is what you're talking about. But uh, actually, a quote, you'd use quotation marks. Now, actually, now this can, ah, that I, I can understand your confusion because sometimes when there's a quote within a quote, you use what looks to be an apostrophe. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm confused. Sorry. Good. No, it's okay. It's similar looking. It's it's confusing. Actually, it's confusing. Apostrophe uh, is is used when uh, the object and uh, ob object and the um, quality. Uh, right. Uh, no. A Are postcard. You? Well, uh, I'm. Not sure. Are you talking about possession? Well, okay. Let's take a look. <laughs> I'm not sure if you got it or not. Uh, let's look at some uses. All right. First of all, apostrophe is used in any contraction. Don't, won't, can't, I'm, we're, I'd, uh, where letters have been omitted uh, or left out. So, uh, okay. Obviously, if we're writing, I don't. Think I can do this? Um, the apostrophe show. It's basically a substitute for the letter. It's joined, so instead of do not, the, the O in not is missing, right? So uh, of course, there's tons of these uh, pronouns, pronouns, and auxiliary verb contractions. There you go. Uh, okay, that's quite obvious. Um, common common use. Uh, you also are going to use an apostrophe when you leave out the first two numbers of a year. Uh, for example, she was in the class of 93 and okay when we speak it she was in the class of 93. You don't need to say she was in the class of 1993, you just say 93 when we're speaking it. This is actually very common. Okay, uh, Keiko, can you think of any other uses of an apostrophe? For an apostrophe, I should say. In the case, in the possessive case, for example, <laughs> yeah. I am reading Homer's Odyssey. Ah, right. Very good. Yes. Uh, Okay. Um, okay. Well, all right. Here's a whole bunch of things about. Yes, you're absolutely right when we're using it as a possessive. But uh, before we go, we're going to look at a couple examples of that. Uh, okay. Um, all right. A singular noun does not end in. S, you can add apostrophe S. Uh, the lady's hands were trembling. Well, uh, okay, fine. Um, this is a possessive, actually, right? This is exactly Homer's hands were trembling. Great, uh, same thing. Okay, we do this. Uh, here, obviously, if I want to make plural of ladies, not a possessive. What is the plural of ladies, Aaron? Do you know? Um, ladies, dears. Yeah. How do you how do you spell it? I mean, sorry. L a d i e s. That's it, ladies. Hello, ladies. Uh, that's it. You got it. That's right. So when you, when you see it like this. Okay, this is obviously a possessive. It's her, they're her hands. Okay. Um, the next one, uh, okay, uh, singular, 
noun that ends in a possessive. All right, this may look like a weird example here. It is my boss's birthday today. This is also a possessive because, well, what's the plural of bosses, Heidi? What's oh, sorry. What's how do you spell mm -hmm. bosses? Plural. Two bosses. Two bosses. For example. How can I say? How do you spell it? Uh huh. Bosses. Yeah. A E S. Yeah, uh, dub, double S E S. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Bosses. I have two bosses. For example. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So to differentiate this from the plural, we'll use the apostrophe. It is my boss's birthday. Again, this is another possessive, like what Keiko was talking about. Uh, uh, another use it is uh, make uh, some long words. To, I'm sorry, make some long words. Long words to uh, make short. When, ah. Uh, uh, government. <laughs> apostrophe T government. Uh yeah, okay. Um like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh uh or uh sometimes especially when we're um especially now yeah, you're absolutely right. And we also use it uh to, to uh, especially in like quotes when we're trying to show the way that people are speaking or their accent or their dialect. So uh, sometimes you may see something like this. Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing, he said. Something like that. Uh, right. Because it's there to show just actually the same way that we in a contraction it shows don't. It shows where the O is missing. Actually, you're right. We can use it in other words to express the idea that there are letters missing. It's really the same idea, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, okay. Five. All right. Let's see if we can unsnarl this. If a singular noun has more than one syllable and ends in S, it is acceptable to use apostrophe S or, this is kind of key to use, only an apostrophe after the S. And I think this second alternative is much more um, common, frankly. Uh, okay, so in other words, oh, well, here we go. Uh, either one. Frankly, if I'm reading newspapers, magazines, whatever, books, this second one, it says acceptable, but frankly, I... I believe that this is the one more commonly used. Okay, the word ends with an S. Again, this is back to a possessive, the metropolises. Now, okay, uh, citizens were very friendly during our visit. So, uh, okay, Eliza, can you read this acceptable second example? Except yeah, acceptable. The Metropolis citizens were very friendly during our visit. Now, here's the thing, Eliza, because this apostrophe is here, we know that the S really is here. So we have to, if we're speaking it, we have to pronounce it. So the Metropolis is, is citizens, not just the Metropolis Metrop citizens. Metropolis citizens. Metropolis is citizens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a, okay. Wait a minute. Get rid of citizens. All right, people. It's a little confusing because we've got another S to begin the word. All right. Now, like this, the metropolis is people. All right. Like the that. Metropolis. People. Metropolis is. Um, metropolis is people. That's it. That's it. Um. So it's easy to see in the first example, but 
but people ignore it. It's it's again the apostrophe is showing a letter that's not there. There's an X, another S there, but it's got to be pronounced with a uh, okay. is just like uh, plurals. Um, it's not for me. <laughs> okay, well that's good. We're <laughs> good. Well, you learn something. Uh, okay, and this and actually this next rule is exactly the same. All right, all right. So uh, Keiko, try reading this example for. Mr. Ness's classroom is very inviting. Ness's. Ness's. That's it. Okay. Same thing. Same exact thing. Uh, really no different at all. Uh, okay, and again, it's perfectly acceptable to write it either way, but it has to be pronounced the way Keiko pronounced it, Ness is. Uh, okay, now, what if you're making it a possessive of an already a plural? All right, the ladies is, is. oh, here's where, <laughs> ah, actually, this is a very common pronunciation problem. Uh, Oh, okay. This is a little bit of a challenge. Aaron, now, this is what it looks like. This is appropriate. So, here's your ladies that you mentioned before, plural. Yeah. We want to make it a possessive. So, we add the apostrophe. How should we speak this? Ladies, restaurant of what's a mess? <laughs> See, okay, English is crazy. Uh, all right. Actually, it seems like it. Logically, you are correct. It seems like it should be the ladies' restroom, but it's not. When we say this, speak it, we simply say the ladies' restroom was a mess. Um, okay, uh, let's see. What's what's another one? Uh, okay, the children's toys were all over the floor. All right, same idea. We don't say children's is... Uh, okay. We just say the children's... The children's toys children's. were all over the floor. To show the possessive. Children, obviously, is already a plural, right? So, uh, uh, okay. So we do not... This... In this case, we do not say ladies is. We just say ladies. Tricky. Tricky, because when we're looking at Mr. Ness's, we do. We When the word ends with an S, uh, for a singular, we actually say the metropolis is, Mr. Ness is. But in this example, we simply just say ladies. Uh, a little tricky there. Um Okay. All right. Here's how we do it. If a plural noun does not end with an S, like children, okay, children, uh, you form the possessive by using apostrophe before the S. So children would be the same way. In my example, I just gave Aaron. Same thing here. The mice's, uh, the mice's tails. All right. Uh, but here it would be pronounced the mice's, what? The mice's tails were caught in a trap. <laughs> that seems weird to me. Uh, okay, yeah, I guess that's right. The mice's tails were caught in a trap. All right. <laughs> a little confusing there with the speaking of it, but basically... The apostrophe. Basically, what you have to remember, apostrophe s, unless it, the word ends with an s, and then you can just use an apostrophe. All right. Uh, good. Because you have the apostrophe doing two, basically two things, either showing possession or um, used as a substitute to show that a letter, or or maybe even more letters, like Heidi's example, government. Uh, some letters have been dropped.
Okay, um, important to note for a compound noun. Place the possessive ending after the last word. Yeah, okay, well, all right. For example, um, my mother-in-law's car was in the garage during the hall storm. Hail storm, sorry. Uh, all right, mother-in-law's. I think that's fairly, fairly easy. Um, air conditioners. The air conditioner's off switch wasn't working. Fine. Um, Okay. Uh, my brother-in-law's cars were damaged in the hailstorm. Okay, so he had more than one car. All right. Still, no difference here, really. It doesn't matter if what you possess is plural or singular, in other words. No big deal there. Uh, oh, and here's another uh, important point. If you want to show possession of the same object by more than one noun, only the last noun will get the possessive structure, the apostrophe, uh, and X. So, for example, I'm looking for Mrs. Garcia, Mrs. Lee, and Miss Carter's office. Okay, the idea being here that they all share the same office. So I don't say, now, if I did, okay, Heidi, what would it mean if I said I'm looking for Mrs. Garcia's, Mrs. Lee's, and Miss Carter's office? Sis. <laughs> office is. Garcia's or, or uh, office? About it. Office. They all have their own separate offices. I'm looking for three offices. And in fact, if you use the possessive for Mrs. Garcia here and Mrs. Lee, you would definitely have to say offices. Not office. Uh, okay. All right. So there you go. If if more than one person possesses or owns or has uh, the office. Okay. And, and there it is. I'm looking for Mrs. Garcia's, Mrs. Lee's, and Mrs. Miss Carter's offices. Okay. Uh, also. Apostrophe has many uses. Uh, use an apostrophe to form the plural of a number, letter, sign, or word used as a word. Ah, okay. Now, when you, all right. Actually, how, how's this spoken, Eliza? How would you speak this? How would you read this? Eliza? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, check to see that you use it. The uh, apostrophe S N. Tricky one. <laughs> tricky one. Do, do you guys know Keiko or Heidi? This is tricky. I'm sorry, Eliza. I keep giving you the hard one. Keiko? I will yeah. try. Yeah, go for it. Check to see that you used the pluses and minuses correctly. That is correct. That is perfect. Yes. Check to see that you used the pluses and minuses correctly. That's exactly correct. So, all right. So, you're, you, you, you're speaking. In this case, they're symbols. You're speaking what the symbol is called. Threes and fours. We were all threes and fours. We were all at sixes and sevens. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So there you go. But when you speak it, you have to say the name of the symbol or whatever. Now, your quotation marks, Eliza. Here we go. Um, okay. Well, you, I, I guess you already said it. So uh, obviously, the first and most obvious. Uh, use of quotation marks um, before and after a direct quote. Uh, if the speaker tag, that is to say, said Martha, or asked Martha, or shouted Martha, that's the speaker tag, that part of the sentence. If that interrupts the quoted material, then two sets of quotation marks are needed. Uh, okay. 
However, obvious. Okay, well, do not put quotation marks around the speaker tag. All, all right. Like, uh, okay. Um, so, all right. As, as in a singular one, uh, I think my leg is broken. Jesse whimpered. Okay, notice also the placement of the comma here. All right, is before. Uh, is before the quotation mark. Quotation mark, then the phrase, comma, quotation mark. All right, period. Now, you, you could also quite easily, basically, all right, let's let's do it. I'm reconstruct this, and it doesn't actually hurt the meaning whatsoever. Uh, let me cut this out. Jesse whimpered. Then uh, I think my leg is broken. Uh, okay. Now notice if I do it the other way, the comma is outside. Is that right? Oh, I can't. Is that? No, that's not right. Wait a minute. Oh, I forgot the space. That's why. There we go. Yeah, that's right. Jesse Wimper, I think I my leg is broken. Obviously, this comma needs to go away. And then the period. Okay. All right, so I could do it either way. Here's uh, some uh, other examples. Oh, well, look, here, here's an <laughs> Silly me, I have another example of what I exactly just did to rework the sentence. But anyway, the idea being you could put the speaker tag on either end. All right, well, here we go. What I just did is exactly what is shown in the next example. Did Mrs. Steele just say we're going to have a test today? And notice the question mark on the outside of the quotation marks and the comma here on the outside. Uh, now, with the tag in the middle, uh, here we go. I can't move. All right. It's by itself. This is an independent sentence. Notice the period being inside the quotation marks. Maria whispered, comma, I'm too scared. Okay. See how that works. Okay. So, uh, obviously, Maria said both of these two short sentences. I can't move and I'm too scared. Okay. So, all right. Notice the placement, how the placement is slightly different. Uh, notice when we have the speaker tag in the middle because so you got the comma on the outside here notice the periods inside uh, okay Be that's because we broke this up into two parts so it's a little bit confusing uh, okay let's see well um, Okay, any questions about this? It's a little bit confusing, but basically these examples kind of show it. No? Okay. Great. Uh, all right. Quotation marks also can go around the titles of short works, like articles, songs, short stories, or poems. Uh, okay. Have you heard the song, Love Me Tender? By Elvis Presley. All right. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay. Um, definitely titles are, are use uh, quotation marks. Now, um, you will see, okay, now this is important. Um, actually, it's kind of key. Short works. When you have books or movies, do you, does anybody know? Actually, let me throw this out to the class. When, okay, it says short works here. For a title for a book or a movie, how should I do that? What what would I do to write 
a title of a, a book or movie? Anybody? In italic, italic characters. Very good. Excellent. That's exactly correct. So title of a movie or a book would definitely, the proper way to do it is to not use quotation marks, but to use italics. Now, on the other hand, if you don't have italics for some reason, um, whatever reason, you, you can't do italics because you don't have that option, that font, then go ahead and use quotation marks, actually. So it's kind of a default when you don't have the option. Uh, okay. Here is another use. Place quotation marks around words, letters, or symbols that are slang or being discussed or used in a special way. Now, this one's a little confusing. Um, okay. Have you ever seen... <laughs> uh, have you ever seen somebody? Okay, I'll have to show you. Um, if you've ever seen somebody do this, all right. Well, looking at the same example, I'm gonna wait. Wait a second. I want to unscreen share for a second. Uh, I want to show you some. You may think this is odd. Or. Uh, hmm, what's going on here? Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, if you've ever heard, if you've ever seen a teacher do this, you might have. I have a real hard time spelling the word miscellaneous. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see English speakers actually give the quotation marks. Or um, somebody will say, Oh, well, he told me that he can't be trusted, okay? Like this is an important word, or maybe the word has, mm, uh, he can't be trusted, mm, okay, maybe he can, maybe he can't. Maybe the word has ambiguity, uh, some ambiguity. Maybe it can mean two things, or it's meaning two things at once. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Um, oh, uh Martha's child is special. There you go. There's a good example. Because in English, special can mean gifted, like a musical genius, or special can mean that they have mental problems. So you might see a native speaker give the quotation marks to indicate that the word here could be ambiguous. Uh, okay. Just wanted to share that because you've probably seen that before. Have you, Heidi? Have you ever seen people do that before with the yes, qu quotation marks? That's what they're doing. They're they're actually with gestures doing exactly this rule that we're looking at. It's kind of funny. It's a weird thing, but Peter Martin from Britain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I've done it before in classrooms. Quite honestly, I know I, I do that. It's a weird thing. I, I, you don't think about it. but Okay, it's also possible, instead of using the quotation marks, to underline it, as in the second example here. Um, okay, now, uh, earlier, Eliza, you were talking about apostrophes, and I was saying, well, there's, there's a specific thing that very confusing it looks like apostrophes and that that is uh, here we go rule number four here you're gonna use single quotation marks within quotations uh, okay for example uh, all right somebody's speaking uh, I am I asked Chris all right uh, Keiko what is your question I'm sorry I can't once again, the verbaling chat box is not fully functioning, so I can't read it completely. Is 
<laughs> okay, I would say that I will never say that word. That's what I would say. <laughs> Funny. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, you, you should have been in a class, well, last night, my yesterday morning for you, we were, Heidi was there, we were looking at phobias. There's some awfully long words that are phobias. Complicated as well. Okay, anyway. All right, here we go. Wait a minute. All right, quotation marks, single quotation marks within quotations. A quote within a quote. Okay, so whatever reason you're having the quote within a quote. So in this example, he's giving the name of a title, of a, of a poem. Great. So here we the, I ask Chris, I'm speaking to Chris, have you ever read the poem? And I'm still speaking. The Raven, I'm giving the title, notice the single quotation marks, by Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, okay, and then, and then the end quotes. Uh, um, okay, so that's how that works. So whatever reason you need to put a quote within a quote, or use quotation marks, within a quote. Uh, you would definitely you you would use the single quotation marks. Furthermore, you know, when speaking this, have you read the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe? You would also obviously be pausing your your speech would slightly pause to indicate a breakup of the phrase there. Okay. Uh, another weird thing that people do, I also have to mention, besides the hand gestures thing, you will often see, for example, in media, um, journalism, television reporting, you will hear people say, um, President Obama said today, quote, we will never surrender, and end quote. So sometimes speakers will indicate the quote, the quotation marks by using the word quote, which basically means here's the first quotation mark and end quote. There's the second. Okay. There's the enclosing quotation mark. So that's another th aspect of how people will speak quotation marks to to show that it's a quote as well. Uh, okay. All right. Well, here's the important stuff. I'm going to Let me move this down here. Okay. Now, all right. Any punctuation used goes to the left of a quotation mark. However, if the punctuation is used to punctuate the whole sentence and not just what is inside the quotation mark, then it goes to the right. For example, have you read the poem, Annabelle Lee? Okay, there it is uh, to the right. Um, okay, so the punctuation is used to punctuate the whole sentence, the this whole thing. All right, so it, it needs to go to the right. Okay, we're talking about the end quotation. Uh, all right, if you're punctuating the whole sentence, if you're finishing the whole sentence, your punctuation goes on the outside. If it's going to be followed with, for example, uh, speaking tag, speaker's tag, then it would go on the inside. Well, hmm, if it's in the middle of a sentence. Now, see, sometimes you have quotes where the person says a sentence, speaker tag, another sentence, which is examples we looked at. Also, sometimes an author will write the quote as like a half a sentence or a clause, the speaker said, the tag, and then the other part of the clause. Okay, so then you don't want the punctuation on the outside of the sentence because you're in the middle of a sentence, actually. What on earth is an ellipsis? Heidi, do you know what an ellipsis is? Mm -hmm. Actually... Actually, ellipsis has two completely different meanings in English. Um, 
Do you have any idea what an ellipsis is? No. Okay. Well, ellipsis are these weird dot, dot, dots that people write <laughs> when they're texting. For example, uh -huh. basically, you don't really use these. Well, you, okay, this is hard to explain. You, you would never use this in business writing, for example. However, formal writing, uh, essay writing, uh, academic writing, it is definitely possible if you really need to show a, an important pause. Um, but usually this is uh, frequently used in informal writing, like texting and I am, instant messaging and so forth. All right, so uh, ellipsis are these little dot, dot, dot things. You mean I... Uh, we have a test today, and of course, if you're going to read it, you would build in the pauses. Uh, ellipsis, uh, well, it has a kind of mathematical geometry meaning, but in addition, in English, ellipsis is something else as well. Ellipsis is when we drop uh, words like, um, sometimes we drop that in a relative pronoun. Uh, occasionally. Sometimes we drop subject nouns. Uh, so when we do that in English, that's also called ellipsis, but that has to do with pronunciation and intonation and so forth. Nothing to do with punctuation. Uh, okay. But, well, all right, well, here you go. I guess when you're writing, uh, I'm sorry, it does have to do with punctuation. My, I, my brain is on backwards today. You use an ellipsis or the dot, dot, dot to indicate omitted words. Okay, so there you go. Spoken or if you're writing that the words were omitted when they were spoken, such as in a quote here, then you blast off uh, on screen as if you're looking out uh, of a spaceship. Oh, okay. So, okay, to indicate the speaking part that I was talking about, you also use this dot, dot, dot thing, or ellipsis. Um, okay, here's an important point. If the ellipsis comes at the end, you still need punctuation at the end of the sentence, and that's a basic golden rule. You must end all sentences with a punctuation always, every time. That's an absolute. But, uh, okay. If it's a period, of course, you would never know because a period would look the same as the dot, dot, dot. So, whatever. Uh, okay. Uh, next one. Hyphen. Eliza, do you know what a hyphen is? Hyphen? Mm. Hi. <laughs> hyphen. I don't know how to speak. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. In a couple classes, Doing a, I'll be doing a um, a uh, uh, um, uh, a game where we'll be giving fake, difficult words and fake uh, um, uh, dictionary the meanings for them. I'm going to use this word hyphen. This will be fun. Anyway, what is a hyphen, Keiko? Do you know? It's uh, an, or an horizontal uh, uh, trace used sure. to separate words in the final of the line or to join words. For example, 21. <laughs> okay. There you go. 21. All right. Right. To, to uh, use, use a hyphen in compound numbers. Uh, to join words, okay, there's a number of examples, but compound, sometimes compound nouns. Um, here's an interesting thing, fun thing about hyphens. In English, 
you are basically allowed in writing or speaking to join two adjectives together with a hyphen if you're writing and make up your own word. In English this is perfectly acceptable. You're not it's there's no problem about oh there's no such word so you can't use it that's not true if you smack two adjectives together with a hyphen guess what you've just made a word uh, they're word builders kind of they are things that join two words together to make a whole new word now off obviously words like 21 or 99 numbers are quite obviously quite common um, Okay, uh, here's one that many people forget. You use it uh, a hyphen for fractions. I use only three fourths of the flower I, you gave me. Okay, actually, this one's forgotten a lot. Um, compound words. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, okay, the court took a 10 minute recess. There you go. This this word ten minute. You're not going to find this in the dictionary, but it's being used uh, obviously as an adjective. Um, and the author has just constructed it because it makes sense here, and and you you could do that in English. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Uh, all right. And again, joining, creating words, or uh, I had to have my arm X-rayed. All right, this is rare, but there you go. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, oh, yeah, joining the words for uh, family relationships, except we do not do it for grand or half, so basically your in-laws or great aunt. There you go. My sister-in-law helps take care of my great aunt. All right, grandparents is a normal compound. Um, Half-sister is it really a compound but it's separated. Okay. Again, joining words. Pretty simple. Uh, all right, Heidi, what's dash? Dash. Dash, dash, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Besides running fast. <laughs> dash across the room. You run very fast, but as far as punctuation, mm -hmm. uh, Okay, well, uh, let's take a look. A dash. Uh, okay. Dashes can be used in punctuation to much kind of like a halfway between ellipsis and, uh, and a hyphen. To indicate uh, interruption, um, these are tricky to use correctly. Here's an example. There's one thing, actually several things, that I need to tell you. This, I mean, obviously there's other ways to do this. You could use the ellipsis, dot, dot, dot. Uh, you could simply use a comma, uh, embrace actually several things with commas. Uh, so there's other ways to do this and it's easy to make mistakes not exactly uh, what I would highly recommend you use very often uh, a very similar use use a dash to attach an afterthought Sarah bought a new pet yesterday a boa constrictor again dot 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 the ellipsis would work just as well here um, and okay, when you're you have your list first, we already learned that you can use uh, a colon to indicate a list. But usually, you introduce it, put a colon, then your list. If you go backwards, use a list, and then explain it. You you can use the dash dash thing here. Oh, we didn't even get to parentheses, and I am out of time, and I've got to go because I have another class. I'm already late for. Um, thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Hopefully you learned a little bit of punctuation, and I'll uh, see you guys soon. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, Keiko. Thank you. Bye. Okay.
Thank you. Hi. Bye-bye.